hello everyone in this tutorial we will be configuring dns we will be configuring dscp and we will be looking into the routing concepts like how to add a static routes reverse routing uh, routing protocols so starting with the configuration very first we will be doing the dns configuration we will be assigning a dns to the box that is sophos xg firewall so for configuring DNS, you will go to network over here. Then you will go to the DNS option, DNS tab. Then over here, you can see it is saying obtain DNS from DSCP, obtain DNS from PPPoE or a static DNS. So let's say, for example, I am located in UAE. So I will be giving my local DNS, which is the DNS usually we use in the country. Additionally, if you want, you can give uh, the DNS where you reside or even you can use a Google DNS 8.8.8.8. It's up to you. So we have configured the static DNS as to uh, 113.42.20.20 and 195.229.241 and 222. I will simply apply this configuration. It is saying DNS configuration has been applied successfully. So this is how guys you do a DNS configuration. Moving on to the DSCP. The next step over here uh, in the network, the next step to the DNS is DSCP. So moving on to DSCP, just let me take you to the design. Our requirement is like uh, we will be configuring a D DSCP server and we will be binding it to port a so that all the devices which are connected to port a must be assigned an ip address through a dscp so we will be starting with the configuration going to the sophos firewall you will be adding the dscp server you will give the name whatever you want i will give dscp lan pool uh, we will bind the interface. Uh, we are going to bind interface A because we, our requirement is that all the machines which are connected to port A should be assigned IP address through a DSCP server. Moving on, it is asking for a starting IP. Just note that the starting IP or end IP should uh, not include the IP of your gateway which we are going to configure later on start IP I will be using 10.1.1.151 so, to let's say for example 10.1.1.199 you can use anything as per your requirement how many client machines that need IP to be assigned from DSCP depending on you can uh, do the configuration uh, like uh, you can configure from let's say for example for the network 10.1.1.0 slash 24 you are giving a gateway 10.1.1.1 so even you can start the dscp uh, dynamic ip list from 10.1.1.2 and end to 10.1.1.254 so it is up to you uh, how many ip addresses you need i have used 10.1.1.151 to 10.1.1.199 static ip mac mapping over here i won't be uh, doing this kind of configuration subnet mask for me it is slash 24 i will keep it as it is domain name is optional i won't be using this gateway uh the by default is check that use interface ip as a gateway and it is a best practice also that uh, the gateway you use as an interface ip i will keep this checkbox as it is and my gateway uh, ip is that is the ip which i have configured on port a is 10.1.1.200 it has taken if you want to change then you can just uh, give it manually but the best practice is you use the interface ip as a gateway moving on default list time and max list time we will leave as it is default and the optional option is conflict detection if you will enable this it will detect the conflict further uh, dns server over here uh, you can give the primary dns and secondary dns or else the best practice is to use the DNS server of the device itself. So if you check on this box, use a device a DNS setting that then you can see it has automatically taken the DNS IPs, which we have configured just some time before in this tutorial. Moving on, you will simply save the configuration. Now, just let's go and see the PC. Uh, just I will add one thing over here. 
in my network one of the ip port a uh, connected to the port a machine that is 10.1.1.150 this is the machine through which I am accessing the Sophos firewall right now that is client PC1 and it has a static IP for now. You will see it is a static IP. Okay, over here you can see uh, there is no DSCP enable, it is a static IP or else I will lose the access for some time. Let's go to client, client PC2, this PC I am talking about. This PC for which we have given IP 10.1.1.100 earlier in our earliest, earlier tutorial but now it is set to DSCP and it has taken the IP also if you will see DSCP enable the IP which has, it has taken is 10.1.1.151 okay moving to client PC1 what we will do we will just uh, change this IP as well to DSCP we will configure for this also We'll say obtain okay, automatic, automatic. Say okay. Oh, you're going to details. Now you can see that even this client PC1 has taken the IP 10.1.1.152, the subnet mask is 255 or 255 or 255 .0. The default gateway and everything, the DNS server, everything is taken from the Sophos XG firewall. Now again, going to the firewall. you will see over here itself that uh, how many clients are connected to your dscp pool just let me refresh it once moving down how many ips are leased it will show you over here you will see that now from this dscp pool which you have configured two ips are being leased with the client host name it is giving uh, so and so and what time it is leased, at what time it will be and what is the client physical address if you will go to this machine over here you will see the client IP address starting with 00 ending with 84 this is the one and it has given the IP 10.1.1.152 so this is how the DSCP configuration work and this is how you can configure the DNS and DSCP moving on uh, just uh, in the last tutorial if you will remember we faced the issue for the policy when we have configured uh, the policy on the country base uh, on the geo location at that time we have to face uh, I mean we have to add a DNS then later on we change the DNS to the client machine so over here what we are going to do we won't be adding any DNS on the client machine nor we will be adding anything just let me make a simple rule for you and I will show you that everything work without any DNS configuration because you have configured the DNS in your firewall itself now there is nothing to worry about if you are allowing the what we say if you are allowing uh, the geo location to be within your country so moving on we will just create one rule uh, and we have seen that it has taken the IP address 151 for client PC2 and 152 for client PC1 right we will create one rule over here I will say client PC2 when the rule name this was not uh, the topic which we were supposed to cover here but uh, just uh, you know in the last time uh, you have understood I have explained very well no doubt but the thing is that I want more clarity on the thing like if uh, you have configured the DNS configuration within the firewall then how, what is the advantage and how beneficial it will be to you and without uh, you know any changes in the client machines it will be so easy like let's say for example what we did it was for one machine but let's assume that we have like 10 15 machines uh, for which you have to assign this kind of policies so it's almost impossible to go and configure the dns what we did in our last tutorial so, so i will be creating a new item ip and uh, I will be you know, since it is a, just for a testing purpose what I will do I will be adding it with the IP name itself and oh, sorry 10.1.1.152 
one by two I will give the name and name you can give anything since I'm creating this just for the testing purpose itself so I will give the name and this is same and I will simply save it schedule time it will be all the time destination zone is van destination network I want it to be United Arab Emirates because I am applying a geo filter which will be limited like the client machine internet access will be limited to only UAE websites services I will keep any I will just link an ad tool as usual I will go over here in the translated source I will say MASQ and simply I will save the configuration no web filtering no application filtering no IPS nothing I will just save the configuration straight away So now the configuration is updated and, and the rule is added successfully. Uh, what I am going to do is I will be browsing the websites which is in the UAE itself. I will be going to the same service provider website that is etisalat.e and you can see the website is reaching right. Additionally, we will just uh, go to the website which is in India location like let's say University of Mumbai website www.mu.ac.in it is not reaching so this justifies that a policy is working and all the website which is in the UAE zone are accessible rest all are denied and over here we have not even added any DNS configuration because the DNS configuration everything we have done on the firewall itself okay so that's all about the DNS DSCP moving further uh, we will be looking after the routing concepts uh, so for SG firewall to support the BGP that is border gateway protocol it supports OSPF open short pass first uh, additionally static routing is supported over here so if you want to add a route static route or a default route let's say for example so what simply you have to do is you will say uh, for any traffic uh, for any destination IP with any mask the gateway is uh, let's say for example when I do or 66 what it is this is the host laptop basically from where you are reaching the internet it is a bridge uh, the next hope to the bridge port and you will say that this is the one and you will save the configuration so this is how you can add the static route then even you can add the reverse routing definitely this we will be looking into it when we will be doing a lab for accessing a web server through a Sophos firewall that is a reverse proxy when we will be learning at that time so guys this was all about the DNS configuration DSCP configuration static routing routing protocol overview so if you like my video please do subscribe to my youtube channel and do share with your friends thanks and see you in the next video